This is Lisa Cove with DOD Fed Globe here today with Katie Miller. Hello, Katie. Can you give us a little bit of information about your military service? Okay, so I uh, I spent the first two years of my undergraduate education at uh, West Point. That's the United States Military Academy. Um, you know, I was uh, ranked in the top one percent of my class at West Point. Um, when I came out to my commanders and I resigned in protest of the don't ask, don't tell policy. Um, you know, honestly, I don't think it's that big of a difference. Um, you know, our troops were ready for this change. It was just a matter of making sure the Congress got on board. Um, you know, the, the Williams Institute estimates that there's already uh, 60 to 65,000 gays and lesbians uh, serving actively uh, at this very moment. Uh, so this transition isn't going to be a large one. No, I, I think the Department of Defense um, loses a lot more service members uh, than just those that were discharged as a result of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So, I mean, I know we've had, uh, since 1993, about 14,000 on record having been discharged under the policy. That doesn't take into account the number that have left voluntarily, who just decided not to renew their contract, or not to even consider military service in the first place. If you look at our, uh, our top universities, some of them didn't even have ROTC programs. Uh, because of this policy. So, I mean, the military, uh, although the transition among the service members I don't think is going to be a tough one, uh, I, I think it's definitely going to be something that improves the military overall. Um, you know, its talent pool is going to increase. So, right, so the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell only uh, applied to the LGB, uh, a portion of the LGBT community. So, uh, transgender service is completely prohibited, and that's because um, the military has this medical disqualification system. Uh, where they consider gender identity disorder um, you know, grounds for not being able to enter uh, into the military. So, and I think this is this is something that needs to needs to go as well. Uh, you know, whether it's sexual orientation or gender identity, it, it doesn't affect how you serve. You know, it doesn't affect your quality as, as a soldier, as an airman, as a, as a um, as a sailor. So it's going to be a matter of time. It's going to be a, a more difficult process because we do because it is again. Uh, written to the medical qualifications, uh, but certainly something that needs to go. I will, certainly. Um, I'm going to be uh, entering the Officer Corps via Officer Candidate School, OCS, uh, following my graduation in May 2012. I'm graduating from Yale University. Yale is actually one of those institutions where we did not have ROTC, and, and the unofficial reason for that was because of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, that being uh, it, it, the military's policies were not consistent with the university's non-discrimination policies. And now that these two are consistent, uh, we're going to be able to, uh, I'm sorry, Navy and Air Force ROTC are going to be reestablished back on campus. So again, another, another positive side effect of the repeal. I say the Defense of Marriage Act affects military families even more than, than civilian families. And I'm going to say that because, you know, the Army capitalizes two words that the English language does not normally capitalize. That's, that's soldier and that's family. Uh, the military has a, a very strong emphasis in, on, on families. You see the, uh, the First Ladies just launched this uh, Supporting Military Families initiative. And now up to this point, our gay and lesbian service members were not included uh, in this initiative or in these, uh, these other services, whether it's uh, childcare, whether it's uh, health benefits or housing. Um, our, our service members, our same-sex couple service members, are uh, just simply neglected. I mean, I think that's interesting. Uh, so a lot of people are saying, you know, like we don't, you know, gays. Uh, I mean, even within the LGBT community, a lot of a lot of our service members say, you know, we don't want special treatment. And I think that's, I think that's representative of a gross misunderstanding of what equal opportunity and pr protected categories are meant to do. Um, so a lot of the dis discrimination that happens, happens at a macro level. You don't necessarily know it's happening. It's not seeing a black person or a gay person saying, hey, I don't think I'm going to promote this person. It's taking a step back and looking and seeing what are the trends? Who's getting promoted? Um, you know, from a very, from a, again, a macro level saying, you know, are, are gays, you know, 75% less likely to get promoted? You know, is, is there some sort of institutional barriers pre preventing, um, you know, pre preventing the, uh, the progress, the promotion. Um, so I think, again, uh, this is representative of, of a misunderstanding of the equal opportunity system, uh, and, and I think gays and lesbians would, would benefit greatly from having having this service. And really, I mean, the reason Don't Ask, Don't Tell was implemented in 1993 was a result of a murder within the military. Um, it was uh, Alan Schindler. He was a he was a sailor, 
and he was brutally murdered by, by other men on his ship. And I, I mean, this is not only terrible because it's, um, you know, it, it's one service member, you know, killing a fellow service member, but because it's sending this, this terrible, violent message uh, that gays are not welcome whatsoever and that, you know, it's dangerous for them to serve. So I think, like, obviously, uh, there, there's, there's a need for hate crimes to be elevated because of uh, the impact um, that it has on uh, the sort of public consensus, the public opinion, the interpretation, perception of that, and what symbols we're sending to the American community and people that want to enlist. So I think it, it's definitely something that, that needs to be included. I mean, it, it just has to be included whether or not um, you know, gays and lesbians understand that.